Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. And I welcome you at our second live stream dedicated to cybersecurity teams. My name is Yevgenia Ruskich, and I am Kaspersky Academy uh, Project Office team lead. And today I will be the host of this live stream. Uh, a bit of information about me. Uh, first of all, I have nine years of experience in education and innovations. And uh, actually, I had no relation to cybersecurity before I joined Kaspersky. But I work here already for four years, and for this time, I studied a lot, though I uh, still can't code, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm here today uh, because I believe that uh, being aware and talking about technologies out loud is very important. And talking about cybersecurity is very important as well. And uh, that's why we've launched a series of these uh, live streams in order to help people be more aware how cybersecurity works and how they may build their careers in this area. And I would like to learn about you more. I hope that uh, most of you were present at our previous live stream, but if not, please tell us in the chat where do you study and why are you here? Share information about yourself. We would be really happy to know more about you. Now, uh, proceeding with our agenda, we, as I mentioned before, we have a series of three interviews with our cybersecurity experts from Kaspersky. The previous interview was held on the 12th of May and was dedicated to blue teams who are defenders. Uh, today's interview is dedicated to developers. And our next interview on May 21st will be dedicated to attackers or red teams. What we'll cover, and today as well. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more what kind of cybersecurity teams exist and uh, what is the BAD pyramid. We'll recall that from our previous uh, live stream. Uh, we'll learn what is the specific of uh, working in the yellow team and how to become a cybersecurity professional related to cybersecurity, uh, to, to yellow teams uh, from our today's expert. And we'll have some fun with you as well, uh, because we've prepared a prize, uh, some stuff branded by Kaspersky for the best question from the audience. Please, uh, when we'll have the interview, direct your questions to our expert. And at the end of this live stream, she will choose the best one. And the second uh, prize that we'll give away uh, is for the person who will uh, be the first to solve the task that our expert prepared for today's live stream. We'll announce the task a little bit later, but be sure that the prize uh, for this task is good enough. So, talking about uh, how cybersecurity teams are divided. Uh, on the previous live stream, my colleague Marina already explained uh, the BAD pyramid, but I will uh, talk about it a bit once again. So BAD pyramid is the build, attack and defend uh, triangle. Uh, defenders or blue teams stand for D uh, and usually are represented by SOC teams, forensics and AMR specialists. The uh, attackers or red teams uh, stand for A, uh, usually are represented by ethical hackers and pen testers. And the team we'll be talking about today are builders or yellow teams. Uh, and those teams are cybersecurity solutions developers. What they usually do. Uh, cybersecurity solutions developers or yellow teams write pieces of code for pen testers who are the red teams or SOC and forensic specialists who are the blue teams. Uh, and they do it using their high level programming skills. And how it works in Kaspersky, for example. Uh, at Kaspersky, machine learning team participates in the automatization processes of our uh, SOC. 
and as well they create utilities for detecting threats and uh, today we will talk uh, to the representatives of uh, to the representative of machine learning team uh, Elena Krupenina who is the senior data scientist at technology research team and after a short video break we'll be back here to the studio together with Elena to start our interview We work to keep smart speakers in tune. And we're always tuned in. To stop kettles taking over the world. We make sure that your education stays on the boil. So that only memes go viral. We protect you, but not from this. We open up opportunities for you all over the world while you're protecting the security of the citizens of the globe. A safer future is absolutely your business. Kaspersky. Welcome back to our live stream and I'm happy to introduce you again to Lena Krupenina, who is the senior data scientist at technology research team and she works at a machine learning team at Kaspersky. So, Lana, it's very nice to have you here today. Please tell us uh, a bit about you and what exactly do you do at Kaspersky? Uh, okay, hi everyone, my name is Lena and uh, I'm a data scientist. Um, I, I have graduated uh, a university uh, with uh, applied math and uh, computer technologies uh, and uh, I have been working as a data scientist uh, for the last uh, three years yeah, and now I'm a member uh, of a Kaspersky team and uh, the main project um, of my activity now is an MDR, it's uh, Manage Detection and Response. Okay, great, thank you. I think we'll learn about uh, the marriage detection and response yeah. uh, in details a bit later. So, uh, just uh, to learn a bit more about how you started your path uh, to the place where you are now, uh, could you please tell us how did you get your first job? Um, okay, uh, I guess my road uh, was uh, a little bit uh, windy uh, and um, mm, I graduated a university in a very small town uh, and uh, there were no ability to find uh, some job, even an internship. Uh, so my first job uh, when I was at university was a specialist uh, at call center. At, at a bank? Uh, yeah, sure, at a bank. Mm, yeah, and um, uh, next uh, I went uh, to Moscow, it's uh, the capital of Russia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, next, I I found my uh, uh, the first uh, um, appropriate job uh, connected to my education, and it was a data analyst. Uh, but uh, after some time, it uh, became a little bit boring. Uh, so I decided that uh, data science it's uh, a very exciting area. So I decided to go here. Okay, and uh, why uh, did you choose cybersecurity? Why did you choose doing data science in a cybersecurity company? Um, I like um, a lot of um, things about data and um, um, privacy, privacy data, yeah. And I can say that uh, Kaspersky is just a cybersecurity company because there are a lot of different projects uh, uh, like. Uh, Mm, anti-spam, anti-phishing, uh, uh, you know, anti-drone, and yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> uh, all of them um, not just uh, cybersecurity projects. Well, for sure, we have a big pile of uh, different uh, activities and even some hardware projects right now. So it's not about uh, antivirus anymore. But uh, could you tell me also, uh, in your opinion, do people choose uh, data science for their education or as a career opportunity just because it is cool? Data science sounds cool. Um, mm, you know, 
Mm, now data science uh, is real cool. Uh, it's like a, a mainstream profession uh, and um, a lot of guys uh, suppose that uh, it's uh, the sexiest profession uh, in uh, 21st century. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's uh, really cool. There are a lot of uh, people who work uh, there uh, and uh, a lot of data and uh, this uh, uh, take a lot of uh, people to transform uh, and uh, pre uh, build uh, predictive models. Um, but uh, I think uh, the second thing about it, uh, it's uh, the salary. Because uh, companies uh, are really ready to pay a lot. Uh, so a lot of guys uh, just uh, are excited about salaries uh, and uh, starting learn and uh, get education there. So you, <coughs> uh, to sum up, you say that data science as a uh, fast developing a new direction and job opportunity currently lacks a lot of people, and that's why we people on this uh, position usually have good salaries and also it becomes fancier because yeah. the amount of data grows each year. Yeah, uh, the amount of data uh, grows um, very fast and uh, it's impossible to predict uh, how many people uh, uh, this uh, area need uh, in the future. Uh, because now uh, um, a lot of university open uh, new faculties and uh, try to make uh, more specialists, uh, but uh, it's not enough. And uh, I also think that uh, university should um, make more um, like a, a hard program to prepare good specialists. Uh, yeah, maybe. That's a good point. And uh, then we'll proceed to the next question. Uh, we're now sitting here in, these, uh, in this room, in the studio, uh, two girls working in a cybersecurity company. And I cannot ask this question because we uh, still uh, face uh, the position that girls in programming uh, is not a standard. It's something that's uh, not very. It's not something that uh, happens not as usual as uh, would like it to happen. Uh, have you yourself ever heard of the uh, stereotype that girls can't code, or have you faced uh, any uh, negative uh, previously in your life related to that? Uh, well, um, yeah, I've heard uh, about uh, a lot of stereotypes uh, and. Uh, uh, it's uh, really crazy, uh, but uh, fortunately I have never met uh, male colleagues uh, who try to emphasize the uh, inability of women to code and uh, that's perfect. Uh, all of my colleagues uh, are really cool guys, uh, but uh, I've heard some stories uh, from my friends uh, where girls uh, weren't able to work uh, because of uh, had pressure from male colleagues uh, and uh, the permanent jobs. It was really hard and uh, they spent uh, some time uh, to find um, some women, uh, women clubs. Yeah, and uh, they uh, tried to find some help. So the uh, supportive women clubs? Yeah, supportive women club. Or yeah. cyber security or for programming? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm very happy that you haven't uh, faced these situations yourselves, but it's a pity that it still happens. Uh, and now actually we have a task that Lena have uh, created for you today. And as I promised, here should be the QR code, uh, which you may scan in order to, uh, to see the task. And also the link to the task will appear in the chat in a moment. Um, as I told you before, there will be a cool prize for uh, the person who would be the first to solve this task correctly. And uh, just to announce it, it would be uh, a one-year subscription to Masterclass platform, which is a platform with a lot of uh, workshops with the leading uh, and famous people in different industries, 
you may find there a cooking class from Gordon Ramsay, for example, uh, or, or a lot of other uh, master classes related to filming, to design, uh, to storytelling, etc., etc. So it's something worth uh, fighting for, and I suggest you to scan to the QR code and Хорошо. try to solve Почта the story. Try to solve the story. Uh, uh, th this task uh, related to machine learning and uh, for now we'll have a very short video break and we'll be back here in the studio together with you so much of our life is spent online it's how we communicate and connect study work hello I'm all the things I do online I'm a secure smart shopper for the right price I can buy the whole world I'm cat gifts, peach emojis, but only for my faves. Like a boss, I'm the RPG and action game without lag. And I'm the provider of safe content for my kids. I am what I do online. So are you. Kaspersky, made to protect the online you. Hey, welcome back to the studio. I remind you that today we're talking about uh, yellow teams, especially about the machine learning team at Kaspersky and uh, this team's representative, uh, Yelena. Uh, so, getting back to, uh, to our talk, now I suggest us to talk about data science. Could you please tell me what exactly does your team do? Um. My team um, has uh, a lot of different projects uh, and uh, I guess uh, it's uh, correct to say about uh, my project because uh, I know more about it. Okay. Uh, so I've told that uh, my project uh, is uh, an MDR uh, and um, what task uh, do we have? Uh, we have a lot of uh, alerts and we need to, to find uh, uh, incidents uh, there uh, and uh, help companies uh, to protect uh, their networking uh, as well. And um, also we have uh, a um, team of uh, SOC analysts, uh, so um, they also work a lot uh, with this task. Uh, but uh, uh, they are specialists uh, who can uh, estimate uh, uh, without any machine learning uh, tools uh, uh, all of the data and uh, mm, detect uh, some I incidents there. Uh, so uh, we just try to reduce workload uh, from them. So you try to automate their experience yeah. uh, and their expertise to... <laughs> um, I'm not sure that it's possible to automate uh, all of uh, these uh, expertise, but uh, we can uh, help them uh, to reduce their work because sometimes it's a little bit routine, you know. So you work with the SOC team, uh, which is not a part of your team, they're a separate one? Yeah, correct? sure. And yeah. Uh, do you work uh, with any other teams inside Kaspersky uh, with, with your, as a part of your project? Um, I guess, um, what about uh, MDR project not, uh, just with the SOC analysts, uh, because uh, it's a huge part uh, of expertise and uh, it's uh, impossible to imagine all of uh, our work without uh, them. Uh, they gave us a lot of information uh, and uh, uh, like uh, explore uh, all of these things uh, for us, uh, because um, all of uh, our model based on their expertise and their knowledge. Okay, so uh, and if uh, the consider other projects you've mentioned, for example, anti-spam or anti-phishing, uh, your team members work with other teams as well? Yeah, sure, because uh, they also need uh, a lot of uh, expertise from professional specialists. Okay, great, thank you. Then we'll proceed to the next question and uh, could you tell me and our listeners a bit more about what is uh, like a category of prepared data and how do you prepare data for analysis? Um. Uh, we don't prepare. Uh, ah, okay. You, you mean uh, uh, data for analysis? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, it's uh, a huge part of our work. 
because uh, sometimes people guess that uh, our work is just uh, building models, but uh, it's a delusion. Uh, we need to spend a lot of time uh, for data preparation, like uh, data cleaning, data analysis, uh, and uh, data transformation. Uh, because sometimes uh, they are uh, not uh, in the appropriate view. Um, so also a big problem that um, um, most of data are very dirty. Uh, so usually we spend a lot of time to clean it and uh, sometimes uh, we uh, uh, found a problem that it's impossible to do something with all of this data uh, because uh, uh, because of uh, the dirtiness uh, or uh, lack of uh, different partner, uh, patterns. Okay, and if uh, you'd like to compare the amount of time you spend for data preparation uh, to the amount of time you spare for the rest part of your job, what would be the percentage? Um, I guess uh, uh, the data preparation uh, is more than uh, 60 percent uh, because uh, it uh, also includes um, communication with the uh, SOC analysts because uh, uh, it's impossible to understand uh, mm, some uh, some fields yeah and uh, it's like a group of uh, different interactions mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's possible to call it like data preparation okay cool thank you and you mentioned then sometimes uh, there are situations when you find out that uh, uh, the data you have can't be analyzed. Yeah. What do you do in this situation? Um, uh, there are some uh, approaches uh, that uh, can help you uh, at this situation. For example, uh, sometimes you can ask uh, uh, to get more data for you and uh, it uh, Sometimes it uh, solves uh, all this problem, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, it uh, make can make uh, worse uh, everything. Even worse? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, really. Uh, and uh, you just need to get uh, another information. Uh, like, for example, uh, if you want to um, mm, decide uh, should you do a credit card for a person or not, mm -hmm. uh, you need uh, some relative information like uh, salary, uh, sex, uh, re uh, gender, um, relatives, uh, and, uh, uh, and credit history. Yeah, credit, I mean, I credit history, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, sometimes uh, you need more information, uh, for example, about judgment. It's uh, also a very important thing. Uh, and uh, if uh, nobody uh, gives you this information, uh, you just fail. Well, it makes sense, and this is a g good example, not a sophisticated uh, cybersecurity, but very relatable to me, for example. <laughs> uh, well, let's proceed then. And um, could you tell us a bit more what uh, kind of data or types of data do you analyze here at Kaspersky? Um, now we have um, a lot of logs uh, from uh, mm, companies' networks, uh, and uh, it uh, looks like uh, spreadsheet data, uh, it's, uh, but uh, uh, it's also possible to extract some text information, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, a little bit hard because you need uh, to understand uh, a lot of things uh, and uh, it's not like a text from a book, uh, it's uh, encoded information uh, and uh, you just need to understand uh, what does it mean. Um, uh, there are some projects uh, that um, mm, have uh, um, computer vision and uh, there are just uh, images uh, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, photo of uh, documents. So did you have an experience here at Kaspersky of wor working with uh, images, for example? Uh, here I don't have uh, this uh, experience, but I know colleagues uh, who has. Uh, and uh, I uh, did it before. So uh, on, the on the your previous, previous place? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and so you, you just told that 
uh, the, the data you have uh, is encoded and it's very hard to read. So my next question is how can you work with the uh, very specific data uh, related to cybersecurity when you yourself are not a cybersecurity specialist? Uh, it's uh, impossible to do any successful uh, thing without uh, uh, professional specialists uh, like SOC analysts, uh, you know, because uh, um, when uh, when I came here, sometimes uh, I didn't understand anything. I just uh, uh, saw on data uh, and uh, I saw nothing uh, because uh, they uh, uh, really didn't uh, show me something and uh, um, mm, I spent a lot of time uh, uh, communicating with uh, SOC analysts, uh, with my team, because uh, uh, they prepared uh, good manuals that helped me to dive into all of this uh, specialization. Okay, so SOC analysts are your best friends? <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, they're really my best friends. And uh, how, how much time did it take for you to dive into the specifics uh, of uh, uh, cybersecurity related machine learning? Um, Approximately. Uh, okay, I have been uh, uh, working here for three months okay. and, uh, <laughs> and I can say that uh, I understand uh, everything. It's uh, really hard, but uh, it's uh, very exciting. Exciting to learn something new. Yeah. As usual. Um, so, uh, I remember you mentioned that word, uh, but still uh, as you're not cybersecurity specialist, but you already have three months of expertise, do you know what alert is? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's uh, the favorite word uh, of uh, our team uh, because uh, it's connected with our project, uh, okay. so <laughs> we use it uh, a lot. But uh, before, I thought uh, that uh, alert uh, is just a notification and that's all. So we have them on cell phones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I didn't imagine that uh, it's possible to use it uh, in the cybersecurity context, but uh, it uh, uses uh, here very often. C can you recall a team meeting w which did not include the word alert? Uh, that's a hard question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. Uh, so, uh, right now we'll have another short break, but before that I would like uh, to ask you a question. Uh, you will now have a core code here on the uh, right bottom corner and uh, this is a poll. Uh, now that you know about uh, blue teams from our previous um, live stream and you've learned about the data scientist job from our today's live stream, I'd like you to tell us which you prefer more, uh, reverse or code something as Lena does. Uh, so please vote, uh, would like your, to know your answers and also the link and the code for Mentimeter will be in the chat in a moment. And we're now leaving you for a short, very short video break and be back to you in a minute. Hello everybody, I'm Eugene Kaspersky co-founder and the boss of Kaspersky company. Of course, I do miss uh, the flights, uh, the travels, uh, the meeting people, but at the same time, I learned how to work online and I, I'm really happy to, to see how, we, how it's easy uh, to arrange uh, the events have the easy to communicate to different people in different parts of the world. We have uh, meetings, uh, we have uh, events, we have conferences online, and I think when we get back to normal, we have this knowledge, uh, so be ready to work twice more, uh, plus to uh, the usual meetings, conferences, events, uh, as before COVID, we will have uh, online. Be ready for that. <laughs> Stone age, iron age, now we live in a plastic age. The next age is cyber. Uh, so we're entering the cyber age with all these new technologies, new products. 
what's really missing is the real security for all these new technologies. Uh, because it's not possible to have the, the new world uh, which be cyber in every piece of that, uh, which is not truly secure. So our future for the company, for myself, is uh, to develop new technologies, uh, not just security, but immunity. And I guess uh, there will be very exciting times. Own your future, Eugene Kaspersky. Welcome back. I'm happy that you're still with us. And I remind you that today we're talking with Gilena about uh, yellow teams and how exactly machine learning team works at Kaspersky and her experience. Uh, and also, uh, Lena has prepared a task for you. Here's the QR code. And you may also find a link in the chat. Uh, please try to solve this task related to machine learning. And I remind you that the first person to solve the task correctly will receive a one-year subscription to the Masterclass platform. Now getting back to our interview. Uh, in this blog, I suggest us talking about education and what is the best way according to your opinion, your experience, to become a data scientist. Uh, first of all, could you please tell me uh, what is the, uh, like the core stuff, uh, something that every data scientist needs to know? Um, there are uh, two main things uh, that uh, everybody should uh, uh, know uh, and uh, understand. But, uh, I can say that uh, uh, they should, uh, everybody should uh, know uh, everything at uh, this thing, but uh, uh, most things they should uh, understand. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, obviously math, because it's uh, impossible to um, make some things uh, about it. And uh, even if you have uh, programming skills, um, you can uh, understand uh, a lot of them because uh, a lot of uh, programming tools uh, include um, some things uh, like uh, um, mm, they are based on math uh, especially yeah. uh, and uh, the second thing uh, is uh, programming uh, because uh, you need uh, to build a model and it's impossible to do without uh, knowledge uh, of uh, some languages Okay, so my next uh, question should have been what would you choose, <laughs> math or programming? Uh, but I think that you already answered that uh, they're some kind of equal importance. But uh, if we talk to, for example, to our uh, audience, uh, what would you advise to start with? With math or mm -hmm. with programming? Yeah, uh, sure, I can give some additional information. Uh, I'm sure uh, the math is uh, the most important uh, subject here because uh, it, uh, give, uh, it gives you a basement uh, for uh, next education and uh, if you don't understand math and if you don't like it, uh, uh, probably it's not your area uh, and uh, you uh, shouldn't uh, mm, e explore programming uh, if you don't uh, like uh, math, um, but uh, I have some pr uh, I have uh, some cases, uh, some guys uh, who decided uh, to move uh, from programming to data science, and uh, they are um, quite successful now. But uh, I I guess it's more like. Uh, exception mm -hmm. uh, yeah because uh, it's impossible to do without math uh, but uh, also it depends uh, on your project sometimes you don't need uh, uh, deep knowledge uh, of math and uh, it's possible to know just uh, mm, linear algebra and uh, probability theory uh, not uh, any um, uh, math analysis and uh, something like that Okay, then just a short uh, question uh, before we proceed to the next one. Uh, did you uh, like math when you studied in school? 
Yeah, I like math uh, when I were at school. Uh, it was, uh, I, I guess it was uh, my favorite uh, subject, uh, but I can say the same about university. Uh, because um, um, I guess it was uh, a little bit strange mania to tell us uh, all of this information and uh, uh, you know we have a problem, um, uh, our uh, professors uh, don't have a, a huge salary so they just uh, were interested uh, in reading all of this information but they uh, didn't uh, answer some questions and uh, it was uh, really hard uh, to do it yourself because uh, you need uh, to spend a lot of time. Yeah, actually it's, uh, it's very interesting that you have uh, exactly the same situation as I had yeah. because yeah, while my uh, education and I'm an engineer by education, uh, I also I, I loved math very much while I was a school student but when I learned uh, like higher math in the university uh, it was a pain. <laughs> That's why I wanted to yeah. ask that question. Uh, well, let's continue with the educational part. And uh, uh, could you tell us, uh, do you think that uh, you need some specific personal skills in order to become a data scientist? Mm. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can be an uh, introvert, uh, but you need to communicate with a lot of people because uh, I have already told that uh, when I came here, I spent a lot of time uh, talking with uh, SOC analysts uh, and uh, it's a normal situation for every area, I guess, because uh, um, sometimes uh, you can uh, encounter with uh, different specific knowledge uh, that you didn't have. Um, so it's, um, you should be ready to communicate with a lot of people uh, and uh, try to find, a find out uh, all of uh, um, information uh, for your model, uh, for your data preparation. And sometimes uh, I feel myself like uh, I, um, I behave uh, uh, very, very hard and uh, like pre pressure, a lot of pressure. You put a lot of pressure into communication yeah, with people. Yeah, into communication, but uh, next I realize that it's okay uh, because uh, it's uh, a part of uh, my job and uh, I need to do this uh, because if I don't do that, uh, I won't have all of this information. Okay, so uh, you say that uh, basically there are Two, two parts uh, specifically for the people that go into data science, being ready to communicate with a lot of people yeah. and as I heard also being ready to always learn something new. Well, I think it relates to any uh, modern uh, position, uh, you always need to learn something new, but it looks like data scientists uh, like always explore some new fields, uh, for example, in your case, something related to SOC analysts and all that information. And if you jump to another project, uh, you'll have to learn another new field, yeah? Correct. Yeah, sure. Um, this uh, area is uh, very mutable and uh, it's very modern. Uh, so you need to, to follow all of uh, new researches uh, and uh, it's uh, impossible to, to stay a good data science without it. So. I can uh, I can be a good data science now, but uh, if I uh, don't check uh, any publics uh, and uh, research, I uh, I'm not sure that I wouldn't uh, uh, I would a uh, good data science uh, after two years. Yeah, stagnation is bad. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, what about data? Mm, uh, at my previous uh, job, um, I was a data scientist uh, in a. Uh, biggest uh, bank in Russia and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we uh, had a lot of uh, legal information there. It's uh, like uh, um, uh, legal documents uh, for uh, physical and uh, also for, for B2B. Yeah, for also B2B. And um, it uh, contained a lot of uh, strange information. 
uh, like uh, mm, the first uh, project uh, uh, was uh, connected to with uh, 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 some uh, like some things uh, about uh, um, future salaries uh, and mm -hmm. uh, you need to verify uh, predictions. All the, uh, it's not just a prediction, you need to, to understand is it uh, clear or not? Mm -hmm. And uh, is it correct uh, or not, you know? And it was really hard, uh, we spent also a lot of time uh, communicating uh, with uh, our lawyer specialists. Law specialists? A lawyer. Oh, lawyers. Yeah. Okay. So, but now I get uh, where uh, the example with credit cards come yeah. from. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so, uh, just uh, a question about uh, about the uh, backgrounds or the like additional educational stuff. Do you need to know all the algorithms to do your job good? Uh, it's an uh, interesting question. Um, I guess um, uh, there are no uh, a correct answer uh, for this. But um, uh, as for me, it's a very cool skill uh, because uh, sometimes I got some situation where I needed uh, to improve uh, some algorithm and uh, it uh, was impossible to do without that skills. Uh, so, if you have uh, a lot of uh, computing power, uh, you don't need about it, uh, especially most time. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's uh, possible that uh, uh, one day uh, you saw that uh, you you will see that uh, uh, you have. Uh, mm, a lot of data, uh, a, a lot of uh, guys who want to use your product and uh, that time you need to start a thing uh, about improvements uh, and uh, optimization. Yeah, and, and about optimization, sure. Okay, and um, a question related to job interviews. There, um, as uh, some people told me, there's always a lot of uh, different, uh, maybe not always practical stuff that is asked about uh, during a job interview for a data science position. So could you tell me, have you ever used the merged sort uh, in your day-to-day -day work? <laughs> um. Uh, I were asked uh, a lot uh, about this question uh, at my interviews, uh, uh, but I can say that uh, I uh, used it uh, at the same time uh, at my job. Uh, yeah, I had some situation where I needed it, uh, but uh, it uh, there were a lot of uh, approach uh, how to uh, manage with uh, some situation uh, and uh, it's not like a, a single approach uh, to a single option a single <laughs> option yeah okay so uh, I guess uh, it's um, mm, like a basement uh, to understanding some things and uh, uh, it uh, helps you uh, in some um, more advanced algorithms but uh, I can say that uh, it's uh, uh, very, very necessary. Okay, great. So uh, what would you say, what do you really need to know to get your first job as a data scientist? Um, Okay, mm. uh, uh, I can say that um, it uh, was uh, a little bit tricky because I there is uh, some difference uh, between uh, what uh, employee uh, need uh, to get and uh, what they uh, uh, th what they are going to ask you, and uh, there was some gap uh, because uh, when I got my first job. Uh, I prepared a lot, uh, but uh, I was uh, a little bit surprised uh, about questions. Um, I can say that um, when uh, I uh, made uh, all of this preparation, I um, I spent a lot of time um, 
exploring algorithms uh, uh, about machine learning uh, and uh, how all of uh, them work because uh, uh, sometimes you need to explain uh, how does it work uh, and uh, I, you can be stuck if uh, you don't know how, to, how does it work. Uh, what else? Uh, also, I, I explore, explored uh, algorithms uh, because uh, you asked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, like merge sort, uh, it's uh, also very popular questions. And uh, what else? Um, a lot of uh, tasks uh, about uh, probability theory. Uh, it also in top uh, of uh, data science uh, interviews. Um, and uh, databases. Uh, sometimes um, you need uh, to make an access to uh, make an access to database, uh, and uh, you need to make some uh, grouping, uh, uh, merging, selection, and uh, I another uh, functions. So uh, it's uh, not uh, also. Uh, the main thing uh, you should know, but uh, it's uh, very popular questions. And uh, when I got my first job uh, and uh, when I went to the interview, uh, I got a lot of um, mm, questions, uh, especially about uh, databases. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Now at least we have uh, some short list of areas uh, for you to study if you want to, uh, to find your first job in data science. And uh, I would say it's my final question in this block of our interview. Uh, do you think that university classical education is important, sufficient? Mm. After all my experience, uh, I can say that uh, it's uh, the most important thing. Uh, because now everybody has uh, a lot of uh, resources uh, uh, to get uh, all of uh, this experience, uh, especially theoretical, not practical, um, because uh, there are a huge gap uh, between uh, online courses tasks and uh, practical tasks. Uh, yeah, and um, mm, I guess uh, that uh, uh, classical education is uh, getting older and uh, you you have a lot of uh, subjects that uh, you you have never uh, used uh, somewhere and uh, the main problem um, about classical education you don't understand uh, how you can use that uh, for example now I realize uh, that uh, uh, all of my, uh, not all of my subject, but most of uh, my subject were very important, but uh, uh, 10 years ago I can't uh, uh, understand it and I didn't realize uh, the importance uh, in the future. So you couldn't imagine how, uh, that's what kind of basement is, yeah. uh, is your classical strange subject education. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I guess uh, everybody encountered uh, with that, uh, especially 10 uh, years ago. Uh, you have uh, uh, lectures uh, where you are uh, just uh, sitting and hearing. And uh, you had also practical seminars uh, uh, where you should uh, solve some tasks, but you uh, can understand uh, how can you employ all of uh, these uh, uh, tasks and uh, all of uh, these uh, uh, decision uh, in uh, in industry. Yeah, I also remember the same situation about me and my education. Uh, as for now, we're going to finish this block, but I want to remind you that we have a Mentimeter uh, poll here, over here somewhere, it should be the QR code for you to scan. And you also uh, may find a link in the chat um, for, for the poll. And our question is whether reverse engineering or coding what would you choose after learning about both of these uh, activities uh, well, in eyes of uh, Kaspersky employees? 
and we'll have a short break right now and be back after a video uh, with our wrapping up session. Hey, welcome back to our live stream. I remind you that we're talking about Yellow Teams today with Lena and about machine learning at Kaspersky especially. Uh, so we've discussed uh, Lena's background, then we've discussed uh, what is data science and how it's applied here uh, at Kaspersky. And we've talked about the specifics of education for a data scientists. And now we should, I think, wrap up our session because we already talked about 50 minutes. I, as far as I know, we have a correct answer for the test. Yeah, yeah? sure. Uh, but Lena, could you, uh, could you tell us a bit about the task itself? Mm -hmm. And uh, what are the actual correct answers? And after Lena uh, tells us what is the correct answer, uh, we will congratulate the winner. Uh, so, as you see uh, at uh, all of these data sets uh, and uh, labels, you uh, understand that uh, all of them are imbalanced. Uh, and uh, for imbalanced uh, labels, uh, for imbalanced uh, data sets, uh, it's uh, the best way to use uh, Rockauk, especially if you uh, don't don't uh, need to, to choose uh, like uh, uh, zero targets or uh, one targets and uh, if uh, it uh, doesn't matter uh, what should you choose but uh, if you need uh, to, um, to if you uh, work for example uh, with the uh, for data like uh, cybersecurity companies and you have imbalance uh, data sets uh, and um, Mm, it's uh, not uh, so huge. Uh, you can use uh, log loss, but say uh, if uh, your data set uh, is bigger, you should uh, use F measure because uh, uh, Rockauk uh, uh, doesn't give you any information uh, uh, between uh, zero labels and uh, one labels. So that's Great. all. Great, thank you. And I should tell that the winner. Uh, in this task is uh, Christus Bermpotsis. I'm very sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, my congratulations to you. Uh, please uh, write us at academy at kaspersky.com uh, for receiving your prize. And uh, we'll continue with the questions we have from our audience right now, yeah. okay? Great. So the first uh, question is, do you and your team use uh, supervised regression classification or unsupervised association, etc., machine learning? Um, we especially use uh, supervised methods because uh, uh, it, uh, it gives us uh, a lot of information and uh, now it's uh, impossible uh, to do something without that. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, we try to predict and uh, mark up uh, our data ourselves. Okay, the next question. Are you working on an AI for your area? Uh, it depends uh, on meaning of uh, AI. Uh, I suppose the question is about artificial intelligence, but yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, yeah uh, I understand, but... Yeah, uh, artificial intelligence. It uh, depends... Uh, 
um, meaning uh, what uh, uh, guy uh, what, what the person yeah, yeah. actually uh, I may say that we have uh, a position by our CEO uh, Eugen Kaspersky that uh, as for now artificial intelligence does not exist there is machine learning but uh, there is nothing that you may call artificial intelligence. You may Google that position. I, I should not talk about that too much. <laughs> but I remember that he told uh, something about that. Uh, so I think we should uh, skip this question and follow to yeah, the next I, one. I can just say that uh, yeah, of course. We, we use uh, and, uh, machine learning and deep learning both. Uh, and uh, sometimes machine learning can uh, uh, solve uh, some problems uh, better than deep learning because uh, it uh, uh, just uh, understands uh, more information. Yeah, and that's all. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, now the next question. I'm not sure if you might answer it, but let's try. How do you tell the difference between malware and clean files when utilizing machine learning in an antivirus product? Mm, I'm not sure that uh, I'm ready to answer. Okay, so Lena uh, does not work with the antivirus product. Uh, she is not an expert in, in this area, but uh, if you really want to know the answer to this question, please also email us at academy at kaspersky.com and we'll direct this question to the correct person and send you the answer. Uh, well, the next question, uh, how to grow your expertise if you want to become a product specialist or could you rephrase, uh, well, the, the could you answer something about product specialists? Um, mm, what does it mean, product specialists? Uh, the people who are in charge of uh, building new products in Kaspersky. Ah, um, I guess uh, first you need uh, to work uh, probably as an engineer here or as uh, any specialist and uh, just dive uh, into all of this area because uh, but uh, if you have uh, some knowledge about uh, how does it work, uh, you can uh, do it uh, without, um, without uh, any additional information. Uh, what about uh, Kaspersky? It's possible to build your own products. Uh, so if you have uh, some great idea, uh, you can offer that uh, for, for your boss. Uh, and uh, we have a team that can uh, help you to develop uh, all of your products uh, if uh, they understand that uh, it uh, uh, can uh, achieve uh, um, something important and uh, become an important part uh, of uh, people's life. Okay, great, thank you. But uh, we, yeah, we, I, I think we cannot add anything additionally about uh, how to become a product manager. I, as far as I see, we don't have any more questions related to our live stream. Uh, if you have any more, please share right now in the chat because otherwise we'll wrap up the session. And uh, as far as I know, in our Mintimeter voting, we currently almost have the balance in between the blue and the yellow team because Six people, if I'm not mistaken, voted for reverence engineering and five people voted for coding. <laughs> so it's almost equal. I'm happy that we have a very well-balanced audience today. Uh, and now, if uh, we have no more questions in the chat, I, will, I would like to proceed with a series of very short questions to you, Lena, in order to finish this live stream. So let's go. What do you like about your job? Okay, I like um, mm, great challenges and research. Okay, good. And what do you hate about your job? Um, I hate uh, mark up uh, some data because sometimes uh, I need to do it uh, and uh, I should spend uh, some time. It's uh, uh, really dull and boring. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's very boring. <laughs> okay, but uh, sometimes it's very cool because uh, you need to, to degrees uh, 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 degrees uh, like uh, pressure in your brain. Uh, meditate. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, let's uh, meditate. Uh, how do you educate yourself? Um, 
now I uh, use a lot of um, mm, websites uh, like Medium towards data science uh, uh, and uh, mm, Kaggle. Uh, at Kaggle you can find uh, a lot of uh, um, appropriate information uh, and uh, it's really cool. I'm not sure that uh, um, mm, uh, that uh, I need to spend a lot of time uh, during online courses, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, I can find uh, something very exciting and useful for me. Okay, great. Could you give a short advice to our listeners how to kick off their careers in data science? Um, I guess um, you mm, don't be, uh, you shouldn't be afraid uh, of uh, uh, some tasks, espe especially uh, of uh, description uh, in uh, uh, job description, yeah, and uh, about uh, job requirements uh, because uh, it uh, may be very frightened. Uh, I it uh, got me very nervous sometimes. Uh, and uh, if you have an opportunity, you should uh, go to internships and. Uh, uh, don't believe just in online courses because there is a, a huge gap uh, between industry tasks and the tasks in online learning courses. Okay, so uh, basically the, uh, the advice is receive as much uh, practical exercises as you may and start internships if you can. And last but not least, uh, could you please finish this interview with one phrase? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I guess uh, everybody knows uh, the phrase uh, like uh, better safe than sorry and uh, I think uh, it uh, doesn't work everywhere so uh, you need to be brave and uh, courageous and uh, don't be afraid uh, of uh, new things. Great, thank you very much Lena thank and you. thank you for joining us today. Uh, and to all of our listeners, thank you for taking your time and joining us today for this live stream. Uh, we will be waiting for you on our third live stream dedicated to uh, red teams and uh, offensive security uh, on this Friday, May 21st, on the same time. And hope you will enjoy all this series of our live streams dedicated to cybersecurity teams. Thank you very much and have a very nice day, evening, uh, if you're in Asia. Bye bye. We work to keep smart speakers in tune, and we're always tuned in to stop kettles taking over the world. We make sure that your education stays on the boil. So that only memes go viral. We protect you, but not from this. We open up opportunities for you all over the world while you're protecting the security of the citizens of the globe. A safer future is absolutely your business.